All right. So anyways, how does a channel break strategy work? Essentially, what you're looking for is a pattern where uh, currency is moving in a same similar direction to the high, the similar um, newer lower low to newer higher high, uh, whichever it is, whether it's a down trend or uptrend. Um, mm -hmm. You basically draw a trend line by hitting all the lows and yeah. you draw another trend line that hits all the highs. Now it's impossible to actually hit every single lows and highs since the trend line, you know, it's a straight line, mm -hmm. but essentially you're trying to connect as many as possible and you're trying to identify potential uh, channels within um, the currency. Sometimes yeah. you can have one big channel and a, and a channel within a channel. Mm -hmm. um, like, as you can see here, there's multiple channels being formed. However, overall, this channel that I uh, drawn out since uh, beginning of the month has been fairly accurate because every single time the currency hits the new lower high, it, it hits the similar uh, resistance level in the channel. Essentially, uh, how you can trade this is two ways. You can follow the channel and use the channel, the the um, upper channel as the uh, resistance level, or you can follow the uh, lower channel and, and use that as a support channel. Mm -hmm. Also, when uh, a channel break occurs, it's a very strong indication that you might be able to get into reversal opportunity. So for example, right here, yeah, um, we actually had key level support here um, drawn with the uh, horizontal line and then mm -hmm. uh, right here it, it broke out of channel having yeah. said that you know breakout of channels can happen pretty often but whether it's going to stay a permanent breakout or just a temporary breakout like a minor retracement that's when you need to figure out okay is this going to break resistance level because right now this green green line it also works as a resistance level back here with support but over here it became resistance yep so you're gonna you're gonna first your suspicion your primary suspicion comes when it breaks the uh, channel there's no slowing down on the candlestick so what you're gonna want to observe is the momentum of the candle so this is where price action becomes very important a lot of people think they can just rely on indicators but you cannot you have to um you have to observe everything so let me just grab the uh the magnifying tool here so we're okay. gonna observe right here okay so here we can see that uh there was some pullback but the pullbacks weren't any significant you can see um let me just grab the annotate tool you can see that evidently it just kept increasing the buyers kept pre um pressing upwards right mm -hmm. so there was not there was minor pullbacks right here which you can observe but it wasn't right. significant enough to slow down the momentum again there was minor pullback that occurred um, right when it was about to, about to hit the resistance level, but it still could not stop it. Now, how do you know when um, uh, this uh, resistance level might actually stop the candle and there's lost momentum? If, for example, after this uh, period closed like the way it did, if it formed another bearish and it created a bearish engulfing and yeah. it started to uh, assimil assimilate more towards a seller side, then you can um, say, okay, there's some loss in momentum. Even if it continued onwards, you can mm -hmm. see that there's more significant loss in momentum. Having said that, in this scenario, there was barely any loss in momentum. So what yeah. does that suggest? That suggests that, that suggests basically continuation, possibility of continuity in this uh, trend. And of mm -hmm. course, it actually ends up spiking quite a bit. Yeah. Um, it actually ended up spiking yeah, over a thousand pips. Having said that, I'll be honest with you, um, I was actually trading here. Mm -hmm. And because it was key resistance level, I was actually, I had opened a sell position here. Okay, okay. near this area, because I saw a very slight bit of resistance and basically I was scalping. So when, when I noticed a minor price action, I did enter, right? Not mm -hmm. realizing that it was actually going to spike. So I made an error there, but it's okay because why? When, when, a, when a change like that occurs, you can, you can simply hedge the position to mm -hmm. basically secure the amount of, um, secure your position essentially. And I'll, I'll, ex I'll explain to you exactly what I had to do. Mm -hmm. So right around, 
I'll show you where I entered into a cell. I actually entered into a cell around here. Okay. Yeah. So I've done a pretty significant size. I'm not going to lie. I did like three lots. Okay. I was in a couple hundred dollar drawdown mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait a minute. That pullback was a fake out. Yeah. This is now hitting resistant key resistance and I'm seeing a solid bullish pattern. Yeah. At this point, I had to analyze the other periods. I went to one minute to see how the candles were forming. And I noticed that it wasn't really like the sellers were not pushing, pushing um, downwards. And there was, there was barely any um, loss in the momentum. So I just kept cycling through the periods. And sure enough, I noticed that this is going to be a very significant uh, bullish pattern. Um, right. At that point, essentially what I did was I placed a buy almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And now I've hedged the position. Hedging is basically when you have an open buy and a sell at the same time. But because I noticed that the buyers were stronger in this scenario, I actually counter, I countered uh, the hedge. So instead of doing a same position as my sell, which was yeah. three lot, I actually did a five lot of buy. So it mm. overpowers the yeah. loss accumulated. Right. And then that way, if even if it pulls downwards, I would just take the loss on the buy a little bit and I would still take the profit on the sell. However, mm. uh, in this scenario, I was pretty confident that the buyers were going to win the market at that point. So in, in this case scenario, I've actually hedged that position and um, I've took L on the um, I've took a L on the sell sell position, took a couple mm -hmm. hundred dollar loss, and yeah. then my buy position. I I didn't think it was going to spike all the way there, but yeah. I actually ended up taking profit somewhere around here. So nice. I took profit couple couple hundred pips, which was nice. Yeah, um, and that's basically how you use a channel break strategy. It's mm -hmm. pretty um, it's pretty yeah. useful. Okay, so when you scalp, you don't do any stop losses at all, hey? I do, I oh, you do, do, but you have to understand when you're uh, scalping in the middle of London session, your stop loss may not even work, and mm -hmm. your stop loss, like you, you can, if you do manual stop loss, is better because when you're stopping the loss, like um, what do you call it? Um, what the actual stop loss is, like sometimes, mm -hmm. um, what ends up happening is it moves, it moves too quickly and goes right past the stop loss and actually doesn't even trigger it. Brokers oh, do not need to guarantee the stop loss. They do crazy. not. But most people don't know that. Yeah. Okay. It's just um, it's just a thing that's there just in case. It does stop you most of the times. Mm -hmm. Another reason why I don't like placing stop losses uh, on these quick positions is because um, you can't really do minute under 50 pips. Sometimes I want to take the loss under 50. So mm -hmm. this is another reason why. Um, I don't like to place a stop loss too often. <laughs> Having said that, out of like for default purposes, I normally put stop loss like 200, 300 pips, even when I'm scalping, just in case it does something crazy while I'm not paying attention. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that is that. I'm going to uh, conclude the recording. Thanks. Sorry. Okay.